Hey there, Patty Dominguez here. Thank you for joining me on this episode 98 of the Positioning to Profit podcast. What an honor it is to have you here. And on this episode, I'm having a conversation with the amazing copywriter extraordinaire, Ali Edgar. I met Ali in a mastermind a couple years back, and we have since reconnected, and she happens to be the copy coach over in Prolific Cafe, and we have a really great conversation around copywriting and authenticity. At the same time, we're sharing more about her journey in entrepreneurship and just how to stand out, you know, more on that topic, because as you know, that's what we're all about here, positioning to profit. In other news, before we get started with the show, don't forget to check out the niche and pitch.com. If you struggle with answering the question, so what do you do? And it makes you cringe. You definitely want to check out niche and pitch.com for yourself to save you all of those times where you just kind of choke and you're like, oh my gosh, why is this so difficult? I got you. Nicheandpitch.com for more information on the Niche and Pitch course that I've put together that walks you through the exact system that you want to go through to find your niche, your niche, to find your niche, carve out your white space, and then pitch to know how to stand out, to just make that an ownable thing so that you're connecting with your premium prospect in a way that prompts them to say, tell me more about that. That's how you know you hit the mark. So definitely check out nicheandpitch.com. And with that, let's get on with the show with Ali Edgar. And here we go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. All right. Well, welcome Allie Edgar to the Position to Profit podcast. I am so excited you're here because I just love what you do and how we have so much in common and we talk forever and it's so good to have you here officially on the podcast. Yay. Thank you, Patty. Seriously, I could talk to you for hours and (laughs) I love what you do. I'm a fangirl and I love your prolific cafe community of mavens. You've created an incredible space. So grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you. I I literally have such a vision for what I want to create with Prolific Cafe. And let's see what happens, right? As we evolve through this on my journey to craft the perfect tribe, the perfect community uh, of people that are all conscious capitalists, purpose-driven business owners and, and all that. So I'm so happy that you're a part of it. You've joined as a copy coach officially in Prolific yes. Cafe. And so I wanted to invite you um, on the podcast. And I'm actually really glad that we're talking now because before we hit the go live button, we talked a little bit about how your business has also evolved. Now, I know in the traditional sense, you're a copywriter, but you're more than that. Um, so why don't you give us your three minute story just about your background and then we'll go into how you're different Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go back to the very beginning (laughs) which is um when I was at school actually and this is so cliche but it's I guess it's a cliche because it happens to a lot of people I was really good at writing when I was in school at school right and everybody used to say oh you should be a writer but as a kid I'm like well I don't want to be a journalist I don't have a novel in me like I didn't even know this thing called copywriting existed or what it was back in the day in the 80s in Australia. Um, So I decided I was going to have a career and I decided to join Human Resources because I was always interested in psychology and um, people. So I spent uh, over 10 years, I won't say how long because I feel old, in a corporate career in Human Resources. And um, after that, I started my own home business in um, network marketing. And for anybody that's ever done network marketing, you'll know it's a very different thing, difficult thing to market, right? Um, and I just threw myself into everything. I, I already had a food blog. So I'd already been food blogging for years. So I knew how to create websites. I knew how to kind of write a, a bit of blog, blog work and all that sort of stuff. This business taught me how to do landing pages, how to do lead generation, how to do Facebook advertising, how to do sales calls, how to do all of these things. And it was, I just, as I do, threw myself into everything. Um, 
I realized that that business was not for me, but what I realized was that there was this awesome thing called copywriting. (laughs) And I was actually, it was my thing. And I remember ringing my mom and being like, mom, guess what? I figured out what I want to do when I grow up. And this is like in my thirties, right? Or maybe forties. I don't know. I'm like, I want to be a copywriter. Like, (laughs) and she's like, oh, that's great. Um, she actually said to me, oh, how are you going to get business? But anyway, <laughs> moving on from that. Um, so I just, again, kept immersing myself into copywriting and learning as much as I could. I ended up marketing consulting for a company which was doing Facebook advertising lead generation and just totally changed careers. And um, I'm so happy because I'm doing what I love. And, yeah, I, I work with people all over the world. And I really, as as cheesy as this sounds, I love helping people who actually their purpose is to want to make the world a better place Mm -hmm. because I get to help them get their message out there and positively impact more people. Mm -hmm. And really at the end of the day, I'm the same as everybody else in business, right? There are times when I actually famously hired myself a copywriter last year. We get Mm -hmm. so into our businesses. We talk our own special language. We're experts at what we do that we can't see what it's like to look at our business from the outside. So, um, that's kind of what I get to do, communicate people's awesomeness to the world. And, yeah, I could go on forever. Sorry, was that three minutes? No, no. <laughs> it is perfect. It's a perfect amount of minutes. So the one thing that we talked about before we hit the go button is because we both work with clients and um, in a very complimentary way in that one of the things that I have found that is most prevalent is that people feel the need that there's some kind of formula out there that they have to follow in order to be successful in in the way that they get the word out about what they do, the message that they have. And while there are direct response principles that, of course, you're an expert at and that you can uh, deploy, some things happen both with the way that you're positioning your business as well, as well as how you're helping your clients. And can you tell me the your headline again, the combination? Yeah. I think it's so clever. Um, so um, I was writing my own copy and I came up with this concept that I write sales copy that feels like a cool Jedi mind trick combined with a warm hug. Um, and it just felt so good to me. I'm very intuitive and I got actually got head tingles when I wrote that. I'm like, oh, my God, that's me because I bring um, my own method called neurocopy, which is, you know, lots of study I've done into neuromarketing, so proven techniques that, that connect with the subconscious and push the brain's buy button. But for me, it's not just about that. For me, it's about connecting energetically as well because I'm also quite spiritual. So, you know, and it's being authentic. So that's kind of the warm hug part. The, the Jedi mind trick part is the neuro copy, right? The warm hug is the energy, the intention, and the authenticity that you put into your copy. So I totally agree with you, Patty. You can get comparisonitis where you look at other people and go, oh, my God, that person's copy is so amazing. Why can't I write like them? Um, which is dangerous. And you can also get stuck in formulas, which can be too rigid. And form- copywriting formulas are there for a reason, but they're a guideline, right? So what's most important, particularly if you're a service-based business and you are your brand, is that you are you because only by being authentically you are your people going to be attracted to you. Are your people going to go, she's my person or he's my person, right? So authenticity, and this is what I talk to clients all the time about this. They're scared because, and I said this to you before before we kind of started the podcast, Patty, so many people, like, they've got all this stuff from school. I'm not good in English. Um, I can't write conversationally. I'm not allowed to start a sentence with and. Like, you know, I'm no good at copy. Yes, you can write conversationally. And, in fact, it's a neurocopy principle, but also it's, you know, an authenticity and, and connection principle. If you write the way that you talk conversationally, if that's the way your brand is, people are going to vibe with that and they're either going to like you or they're not. So, you need to just be yourself because famously, as they say, be yourself, everybody else is taken. <laughs> exactly. And we, <clears throat> and I really want to note that as like kind of the secret sauce to good copy is like you definitely want to have the direct response principles that you talked about. Mm-hmm. And yes, there are things that persuasively um, will, I love how you 
talk about like the it the triggers of the brain to buy now. That whole thing mm-hmm. is so important. But the thing that I have found over this time that I've been um, coaching over the past eight years is that when people finally get into the permission to be themselves vulnerably, authentically, that's really the difference maker. And so sometimes, a lot of times, you need a coach, a good coach to guide you through that process and just say, it's okay. And you and I have seen that in action uh, where we've been on a call and and we kind of work through that whole deal of like, well, who am I to show up this way? Or who am I to be that way about this? Or, or for me to, I mean, we think about certain people you know, in the membership Mm -hmm. where they swear Mm -hmm. and they cuss and they have a potty mouth. But what was so amazing is when they started stepping into their authentic selves, they started attracting their people that you're supposed to attract. And so the idea is, is being okay with making Mm -hmm. the decision to step out into who you really are at the risk of some people being turned off by it and saying, I don't really vibe with what you have to say. And that's okay. So it's almost like this fear of loss that we get into like, oh, I want to try to hold on to as many people as possible because then I'll have the Mm -hmm. highest probability of success. Because if I show up to who I really am, I'm going to scare people away. I mean, in your opinion, having worked with clients, what do you think is that gap where people think they're somehow going to lose something if they show up? See, this is where I can get into the personal development space really easily because I have been doing the work on myself for so long and I love working with people who who feel the same way because, you know, we're human beings. So we have problems with sometimes fear of judgment. Um, I've done um, Jim Fortin's TCP program, where which was life-changing. Thank you, Jim. Very grateful. Um, where, you know, you work through all of that but it's still going to come up. So, you know, yeah, you absolutely need a community to support you, a a good coach, um, a copywriter, not just saying that, uh, to remind you of how awesome you are. And because there's a certain amount of fear around like, oh, if I'm authentically me or if I niche or if I'm going to lose people, right? But at the end of the day, what you're going to gain is the more of the right people. The ones mm-hmm. who just feel right, the ones you want to work with, the ones who don't go, oh, how much? Or like, I'm just not mm. sure about that. Or, And yeah, you're going to piss some people off, okay? <laughs> but that's okay because you're being you. And if you think about, you know, if you, anybody listening, if you follow people or you love people or, you know, you're, you know, if I think about Denise Duffield Thomas, who is our, our book um, for this month's book club in Prolific Cafe, she says, I've pissed people off, like, and I'm okay with that because I'm being myself. There's so much power in stepping into who you really are and owning that. And, yeah, it does take time sometimes, but with the right support, um, you know, it just feels so aligned and you'll connect with the right people effortlessly if you step into that. So to that point, what are some tips that you could give in, in terms of the people that you work with where you see that people have gotten a breakthrough that has really been a game changer for them for the copy that they write or how they're showing up or the message that they're finally putting out to the world? What would be some tips? I would say, and everybody's probably going to hate me for saying this, but go back to the very beginning. If your message doesn't feel aligned and there's something wrong, it feels like an ill-fitting dress or something, right? You're constantly adjusting it, really. That's what kind of <laughs> your messaging feels like. Go back to the very very beginning, which is, you know, thinking about your premium client, thinking about your goals, thinking about... And I can't tell you how many times I've had to do this in my own business where things slightly shift or change. And even I'm a copywriter and I'm like, oh God, do I have to do that again? <laughs> So, but you do, um, you need to go back to that. So that's one of the first things I do is start with that. I've got my own connection copy framework that I use with my clients. All right. We are about halfway through the show and I wanted to stop by with a quick share, exciting share that I have. Have you ever heard of Prolific Cafe? It is my women only business membership. 
but it's more than a membership. It's more than the content. It's more than the coaching. It actually has one of the best communities out in the marketplace. And the reason why I say that is because we have built a beautiful community of mavens. That's what we call each other. And we really celebrate successes. We help move each other forward. And the support system is actually incredible. And the reason why that's important is because being an entrepreneur can be a really lonely game. And as much as it's important to have the right type of coaching, of course, having the right courses, of course, it's community. That's the difference maker. And there's nothing like having a support system that's right behind you through the journey. So right now I'm offering a trial of Prolific Cafe. It is by application only. So if you're interested, head on over to prolificcafe.com where we can have a conversation. I can share more about what Prolific Cafe offers and really to see if it's a good fit. So with that, head on over to prolificcafe.com for this exclusive offer, prolificcafe.com. All right, now back to the show. Which goes into a lot of detail on that. And then it's from that that ideas are born because through that, you start looking at your testimonials again. You start looking at, Um, competitor testimonials. Just yesterday, I was looking at a a client's competitor testimonials and getting some freaking amazing ideas for headlines. So Mm. it's going back to the very beginning of all of that and trying to sit back with an objective perspective and going, okay, now what do I do? And not being afraid of a blank page because we're all, sometimes we all sit there and there's a blank page with that cursor beeping at us, right? (laughs) Yeah. Watching at us. It's kind of like mocking us. Like, what are you going to do? So you just start writing. Just start writing ideas. If you're stuck and you're in your head too much or you feel like there's a pattern of self-sabotage, get the support of an amazing community like Patty's. Get a coach um, or get a friend in business because I have some awesome um, women in business that I have great relationships with that I can just go have a coffee with or a Zoom call and um, get some objective perspective that's a mouthful and a half say that fast um and it's from there that the good ideas come out you know so often it's just when I'm having conversations with clients as much as I get a client to fill out a questionnaire before I work with them and that that's the beginning it's the conversation I have with them where the gold nuggets come so if you're not going to work with a copywriter and you're like well how do I do that Ali do I just sit there and talk to myself if that floats your boat that's fine Um, But you can like join a community, you can talk to a friend, there are ways you can do it. And I would always say, and you're going to be like, of course, you're going to say this, but hire a copywriter if you can. If, if for me, I, I, I hate bookkeeping. Okay. So I hired a bookkeeper. (laughs) I actually, I actually don't like planning my own social content. So even you might be like, oh my God, really? Uh, so I hired somebody to do that for me and it is so freeing because it's like if you don't like copy and it's in the back of your mind all the time and it's bothering you and you're like, oh, my God, da, 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 that energy is not good. Like you need to get some help with that, with that shit, sorry, and move on. Mm-hmm. I should have warned, mm-hmm. you, warned you that I swear. At oh, my gosh, time. of course. <laughs> no, I mean, it's all good, yeah. And it, it does, it totally mm-hmm. makes sense. It's like... Those things that are going to bog you down, you can't, the whole cliche of like, you can't see the label from you being on the inside of the jar. Um, So you have to remove yourself and see and see what's, or have somebody else be like, oh, it should be this way or it should be that way, or just doing Mm -hmm. a brain dump. We've talked about that as well in Prolific Mm -hmm. Cafe is like people have this like, I don't know, this hoarding hoarding mentality around concepts or what they want to do with their business. And I'm like, just do a brain dump of all the things and ideas that you're thinking about and then hire someone to help you brainstorm, prioritize, reformulate, recontextualize, all of these things. I literally do not understand how people can possibly think they're going to grow a business without good coaching. I just really don't. I I, I don't get it. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing. It's like you're putting together a sales page. You have to have somebody to help guide you through that process. And they're going to look at, and I I love it because the best is when you get really great copy back from a copywriter and they're like, oh my God, I sound like really legit. (laughs) I sound really Mm -hmm. good. You know what I mean? And that's Mm -hmm. really magical when when that happens. Mm -hmm. So couldn't agree more. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's funny you say magical because I was going to say that. There's that there's 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 magic in copy and the magic is if you get somebody to help you, whether you write it yourself and you get help or coaching on it, or you get somebody to write it for you and you get it back and you're like, Whoa, I'm really good at what I do. This is awesome. Like I've had friends, <laughs> I've had friends and clients go to me, oh my God. I just, I didn't realize, like, I feel so good now. Like, I feel confident. I feel good with my message. Like, so that's, mm-hmm. that's the magic. The other yes, magic confidence. is when you, when you set the right intention and energy with your copy and you're being authentic is that moment of connection. And I, I think you guys, everybody should do this. When you read a sales page, when you read a website, how do you feel? Are you like all in? Are your eyeballs glued to that page? That page? If they are, why? If you have that moment where that happens, and you're like, take my money, man. Like, that's also magic because that person has connected with you. They want to work with you. And your copy, your message has just magnetically attracted them, right? Yeah, I love that. And it's so important. I'd almost say, like, it's so critical to have the message. I love that when you gave me that visual of like, if somebody's looking at your page and they're just glued, I'm like, oof that's it. Like you've captured their attention in that one precious moment. And that's like the Mm -hmm. hardest part of doing this thing because you can have the best offer in the world, but if people don't know about it or you haven't captivated them enough, because how many times have we seen really clever copy uh, behind the wall of the clever copy and the sales, when you hit the Mm -hmm. buy button, it turns out to be something that is not so awesome. (laughs) That's how Mm -hmm. important copy is. You want to have copy and of course the integrity of like following through on what you're going to promise and deliver, but it's so critical. So I, I couldn't agree more. All right. So let's transition. Yes. Um, tell me what is your biggest goal for this year in your copy and what you want to create this year? Well, it's funny you should ask, Patty, because I've been thinking about um, running like 30-day coaching groups. Um, I love coaching. Like I, it's, it lights me up and I just mm-hmm. have so much fun doing it. I also love working with clients and I love getting better at what I do all the time. Um, so this year for me, I'm just tossing around a concept at the moment of this 30 day kind of small group coaching program and maybe doing one. And you gave me some great advice where you said maybe the first one could be on sales pages or something. And the next one could be on emails. and The next one could be on a website. Mm-hmm. A side note, everybody. You might think, oh, my website, ugh, I don't want to work on it. It's so boring. Like my sales page is way more shiny and fun. Your website is where people go to professionally stalk you. It's really important. So, <laughs> so get it right. Yeah. Um, that's a PSA for everybody. Um, so that's what I want to do. I want to, I just want to help more people go from, you know, feeling awkward and uncomfortable and, you know, like that ill-fitting messaging dress that I talked about earlier to just feeling confident and aligned and really, you know, magnetically attracting more of the right people. So to do that, if I can work with them, coach them, give them the skills so that they can do it themselves and get those light bulb moments, like that's very rewarding for me. That's what I love to do. I love it. I love it. All right. So random questions. What's your idea of perfect? Oh, good. What's your idea (laughs) of perfect Mm -hmm. happiness? Um, Being with my family um, on holiday at the beach is my idea of perfect happiness. I I actually knew you were going to say that because I see those pictures (laughs) that you post on social. I'm like, that looks so perfect. And I know how much you enjoy your family. (laughs) That's awesome. Um, (laughs) What is your favorite journey? Ooh, now that's such an open question because they could be like journey as in life journey or journey as in, um, oh my God, this is so cheesy, but I'm just going to say it. Um, the journey of really letting go, um, for people that love Michael Singer, the purpose of life is letting go, right? Mm -hmm. Continuing to let go of fear and just crap and just really becoming more at peace with myself and, yeah, stepping into my power, I suppose. Like I that's, love that. That's, it makes me want to cry. Oh my God, I'm very emotional now. <laughs> it's so important. It's everything, you know, your well being and peace of mind for sure. Um, yeah. What's your greatest extravagance? 
Well, oh my God, this I, I love good wine. I love good food. Um, but last year I was super excited because I had a long-term goal to get myself a Lexus and I did. So oh, I love Lexi. I love very, it. very imaginatively called Lexi. Uh, but Lexi. I love her. Like every time I drive in my car, I'm just like, I'm so grateful. I love your car. <laughs> I, I feel the same way too about Hamilton. So I have a Lexus and I named my car yeah. Hamilton. And I'm so grateful. Anytime I get on call, I'm like, thank you, Hamilton. Thank you so much for, you know what I mean? And I look at it at my car and I'm like, I just love my Hamilton. <laughs> I love that we're both on opposite sides of the world, like loving our Lexus. <laughs> No idea you did the same. I do this literally do the same thing. I'm so grateful for Hamilton. Uh oh, that's so funny. Okay, that's so random, right? Um, <laughs> what talent would you most like to have? Um, singing. I suck at singing. Like I am so bad at it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like a good, a good like the ability to belt a song, like hit that high note, that's like magical. That's mm-hmm. it is a gift from yeah from a higher power, whatever you want to call it, to be able to sing in that way for sure. I agree. Yeah, without worrying that people's ears are bleeding when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're funny. Uh, and the last one, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Hmm. I don't know. This is going to sound really weird, but I've done so much work on myself and I know that even things that I think I don't like about myself or things that are things that I just need to let go of. So I know that sounds like a very out there kind of concept, but yeah, I've just had a healing session yesterday, everybody. And I'm like, Oh, two days ago. And I'm like, still mind blown here. So that was a really weird way to answer that question, but no, it's not weird. I always think I'm like, if I could change one thing, I'd be like, I'd want to be like 28 forever because in my mind, I'm perpetually oh, 28. That's a good one. I'm not kidding. Like I <laughs> could li- yes, 40s, 50s, 60s. I'm always going to feel like I'm still 28. Cuz I that's as I'm aging, do though. It's awesome. Right? It is awesome. Mm. It's like and and even yeah. if people are like, "Oh, you know, we're like, oh, I can't believe that you have a 20-year-old." I'm like, "I know, right? My night cream." But also, I think it's the attitude yeah. <laughs> that I feel like I'm 28. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. You're only as old as you feel, right? So I totally think yeah. that. So, mm. all right. With that, Ali Edgar, how do people get in touch with you so they can combine the neurocopy and the warm hug with your Jedi tricks mm. and all that combined, I think is so <laughs> beautiful, which I believe is the secret sauce to copywriting, which is the theme of this podcast. How do people get in touch with you? Um, you can check out my website, aliadgar.com. And um, whether you have written something and you, you're like, it's still not right, I need some coaching or I need some help, or whether you're like, just for God, the love of God, help me and write something from scratch, please, because <laughs> it's hurting my mind. Um, I'm here for you. So and you can just book a discovery call. Let's have a chat. And um, yeah. Perfect. Love to talk to you. Thank you, Patty, for having me. So Thank awesome having you. you. I feel yeah. like I was a bit, a bit cray cray during that podcast. I'm like, what did I actually just say? No, it was so good. So <laughs> Ali Edgar, A L I E D G A R dot com, Ali Edgar dot com. The links and um, mm-hmm. so- socials as well are going to be in the show notes. But thank you so much for being on thank the show. You. I love that you're the copy coach in Prolific Cafe. I love that we both have mm-hmm. Lexuses and we love our Lexus and we talk to the Lexus <laughs> yeah. like it's a person. I mean, we have a lot of commonalities, a lot more so than before I hit the record button. So I'm totally digging this episode. If there's anything that we learned, right? Every time now I'm going to be on my Lexus, I'll be thanking my Lexus and thinking of you. Yes. And be like, and channel Hamilton. And I'll think of your Lexus, Lexi. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Patty. Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media. 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them. And use hashtag positioning to profit so that I can (laughs) search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time. 